Welcome to the first Shangaramangaram family documentary created to pass on the rich Shangaramangaram history to future generations now living in all parts of the world. The Shangaramangaram family has a rich history, treasured traditions, a theme of togetherness, a determination to overcome whatever separates us and a will to welcome whoever wants to be among us. There is an unmistakable pull that binds the Shangaramangaram family together, the unconditional, unrelenting pull of the heart. We have been touched as a family by death, divorce, disappointment, difficulty, and distance, yet we have love for one another and a lasting family fellowship. Our history turns back to AD 52, when the same Thomas, one of the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, came to Kerala. He landed in Missouri, that was the important seaport at that time. And from there, he walked, he went 50 miles north to Paleo. In Palayu, he found four Brahmin priests taking morning, morning prayer and a, and a bath in the pond. Saint Thomas asked him, what are you doing? They said, we are worshipping Sun God and we are offering him our offering. Then why that water is coming down? So same in the, the four people, one of them said, that is nature's rule, the water is thrown out, it has to come back, come down. That is nature's rule. And Thomas told them, I believe in a living God. If I offer a, a propitiation, he will definitely accept it, it will never come back to me. Do, can you believe in that God? He said, yes, it can show it. And so St. Thomas went down into the pond, prayed, then took a handful of water and threw up and the whole water went straight and up and up and gone off. It has never come down. And a pit was found in the place where he dipped his hand and took the water. They were surprised. These four Brahmins were Sangraguri, Pavilomattam, Kalli and Kaliyangri So they believed in him. They invited him to their house. They learned about Christianity and became Christians and at the same point they were baptized by St. Thomas. And then they lived very happily in then after that several other families also accepted Christianity. But then after some time problems started between the communities. Intercommunal problems started. So they left Pali to Angamali in AD 157. The name was changed from Shangaraguri to Shangaramangaram because the Raja said, God is with you, Shangar is with you, Shangar is Mangalam for you. That means God is gracious to you. That is Shangaramangaram. So the name was changed to Shangaramangaram. That is how we came and Shangaramangaram was come. In the ensuing years, through God's amazing grace, our forefathers planted the Martha Miriam Church of St. Thomas in 337 AD in Kura Vilangada. Our forefathers stayed in this place until 1665. There, the Shankapuri family lived on the Fekka side, which is on the south side of the Martha Miriam Church. Wow. My God. And you are a Shangaraburi? Yes. And we are a Shangaramangaram. Same. Same. Through many dangers from the time of Vasco da Gama in 1498 and the Portuguese takeover, and through the following economic and political struggles, 
our forefathers sacrificed and sustained their orthodox faith. In the 17th century, Kunyamen Kudavawa, a Shankarapuri, was active as a practicing St. Thomas Christian, a warrior with martial arts skills and a teacher. He served in the armies of the King of Edipuli, and he died in battle, defending his faith and his kingdom. Thereafter, the family fled to Kavagum Prayar in 1666 AD. There they worshiped at St. Mary's Church and Kalupara. The current Raja was so very impressed by their martial arts skills that he hired them as his own bodyguards. There were more dangers, toils, and snares defending their faith so that the family had to flee and they reached Edivati in 1672. There the Raja presented our forefathers with his own sword and shield and umbrella for their advanced martial arts skills and service to his kingdom at Edivati. Also, the Raja offered the family land as a gift, but the sons of Kunyamen and Kuravala paid for their own land and built a home in Genachukata. There, they served the local church and were loved and respected by the whole community for their orthodox faith and good works. In 1700, the Raja granted Kunyamen, the forefather of, of us all, in the Shangaramangaram family, the title Tharagan. Kunyamen named the land Shankarakulam. A four-winged house and a gateway were constructed in 1704. Then the Raja bestowed the name Shangaramangaram on the family. God bless Kunyamen Tharagan I with great prosperity and great progeny like Abraham in the Old Testament. In modern times, one of Kunyamen Thurigan the first descendants is Shangaramangaram Matthew George. Mr. C.M. George was born and baptized at Emmanuel Martoma Church, where the family moved from Kulapara at the time of the Protestant Reformation. C.M. George was baptized in this church and his family members are buried there. C.M. received his academic and athletic training in Edivati at St. John's School. This is a very special place in my father's life. He went to high school and graduated from here. He was uh, played soccer, he was captain of the soccer team, and then after he graduated from college, he came back here and taught. This school along and was very special to his memory. He and all his brothers went to school here. So he remembered this fondly, and this is where he learned how team sports by being the captain of the soccer team. So in honor of his uh, walking this school, which looks pretty much the same as it did when he went to school, we are we're visiting it to, in his honor. In 1947, C.M. George left Kerala to work in the newly developing Kuwaiti oil fields. C.M. George was married to Elizabeth Eapen in 1941. He was an Indian pioneer to Kuwait, leaving all his comfort and security to find a new life in the Kuwaiti oil fields. CM was an avid gardener, athlete, and active member of the community and the Martoma Church. What are your memories of my father? He is such a sweet man. Never get angry with anyone. So joking, always happy. Can make any amount of jokes, make others laugh. <laughs> As I grow older, I become, I, I never thought I would be like my father looking. You are exactly like my father. 
right? You can actually have great fun without the jokes, you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. What memories would you share with the next generation who hasn't met my father about what my father's contribution to your life was and what others should do going forward? Yeah, he brought my mom to Australia. So he you brought your mother. Start. Your brother. You brought your mother to Kuwait. Yes. That was a great help. So we could do so many things for others. My favorite picture of being uh, in Kuwait and remembering you was being in your way. He was also passionate about both Indian and English literature. CM's only sister, the late Eliyama Thomas, recites a well-known Malayalam poem that CM taught her as a young girl. CM George loved literature and she nostalgically remembers this poem when she is 92. Mary John thought of the day, Avutriva Sundarau, Anaya Saprasarau Maya, Kavidai, Adiyar Sundarne. CM's sister is recalling his affection and patience along with his learned gentleness. Today we are also honoring our only living aunt at the time of this documentary with the ancient custom of Panadu. <laughs> Both Eliyama Thomas and C.M. George inherited their generosity, learning, and compassion from their father and grandfathers. And the long line of Shangaramangarams going back to Kunyamen Thudigan I. In the scriptures, we read that Israel was led by God and Moses into the wilderness, and God fed them with quail and manna from heaven, thus led them finally to the promised land. The Lord has also led our Shangaramangaram forefathers and foremothers from Palayur to Edivate. We are now 12 generations of Shangaramangarams from Kunyamen Thudigan I and we have been led to the promised lands around the world. At present, there are 675 Shangaramangaram families scattered in India, the Far East, Australia, Europe, Africa, and America, serving in education, medicine, business, ministry, engineering, legal work, information technology, and all have contributed to the social, economic, and spiritual welfare of their new lands. The amazing grace that brought St. Thomas to Kerala to speak God's praise now calls each one of the Shangaramangaram family to live out the rich legacy of grace, service, resilience, perseverance, generosity, and integrity, and an orthodox faith. This is the Shangaramangaram family legacy to the world. You know, they are busy. I'm not blaming. But very busy. Will they get time to pray? Mm. Will they get time to read the Bible? Mm. 
will they spend some time every at least one Sunday to go to the church and worship with others in a communion? This is the best thing. That is the only thing that we can do. Our future generation shall follow Christ and then he will definitely bless us because he is Emmanuel, God be with us. This documentary was produced by O.C. and Nirmala Abraham, the Reverend Dr. Asha George Geiser, Ajit Matthew George, during their search for roots from December through January 2015, in honor of the 100th birthday of Shangaramangaram Matthew George.